Hi there, I'm James Stroh, publisher of the Global Legal Insights to Fund Finance. Today, I'm joined by Terry Hatton. Uh, he's MD and Head of Fund Finance at MUFG Americas, based in New York. Terry, great to see you. Hey, James, thanks very much for reaching out and having me this morning. I appreciate it. Uh, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. And uh, we come together really to talk at the start of 2023. Uh, twofold. One, about the pink book a little bit as we look forward to its launch, and also, more appropriately, uh, at the start of this year, the fund finance market and what your expectations are uh, as well heading into this next 12-month period. Sure. Well, that's a lot to, to talk about in uh, just a few minutes, but let me uh, first thank you and GLI for everything that you do for the industry. You know, what's become known as the pink book is a fundamental mainstay of the industry at this point in time. If there's one item that disappears before all others, and, and I mean this sincerely, it's the copies of the pink book that get distributed at the symposiums. You know, we can't always send everyone to these conferences that we want to. So it's great to be able to pick this up. And it's a great reference tool, but we can bring it back to people uh, here at the office and they can go through it and uh, read the articles themselves. The Pink Book is always insightful in terms of the articles and it's written in an easy way, an easy format that everyone can understand it. You know, getting the perspective of those on the front line and um, is great and, and uh, there's so many different articles. So it's, it's very much appreciated. With all that's happening in the industry, I gotta tell you though, James, we have high expectations of GLI this year and I know you've met them in the past and I'm sure you'll exceed them this year. That's, that's no pressure then, uh, Terry, but you'll have to wait and see. Um, in Miami, uh, the, the printed version, um, and hopefully it will meet your expectations, that's for sure. Um, listen, over the past few years, Terry, the fund finance industry has continued to grow. I mean, it's surprised us throughout the COVID period, you know, the whole resilience of the market. Um, and as I say, that continued innovation and growth. No doubt there are macroeconomic issues that are facing everyone uh, in 2023. And that will be the same for everyone in the fund finance industry. But I'd be keen just to hear a little bit from you on your own thoughts uh, and feelings as to how the market will hold up in 2023 and what's in store for fund finance. Sure. Well, look, you've touched a little bit about on what happened in 2022, but maybe just a, a little more rounding out from my perspective before I, I get into 2023. You know, we saw a continued growth over the past year. The market's been strong and holding up well. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this year or next year, we passed the $1 trillion market for this paper. You know, it, it's honestly grown quite exponentially over the past um, number of years. I, I, I remember when, you know, there were people that just didn't even understand what this business was all about, but that's not the case anymore. Um, at any point in time, though, it's hard to see just exactly what net new business there is. You know, this is a bit of a private market. And so we see deals get laid on and, and uh, many get wrapped up as uh, money is returned to investors and funds harvest uh, the capital or um, projects that they're working on. There were a lot of number or there were a number of large um, profile deals over $3 billion over the past year that have used a lot of capital and a lot of capacity. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some of those spill over and fill out uh, in 2023. We also saw a trend toward the end of the year in filling out tickets as a result of a number of different factors. You know, some banks, as you well know, are having or were having issues with either liquidity or capital ratios, particularly as interest rates have been changing here. A lot of the budgets were met or exceeded. 2022 was just a very active year. Overall volume, uh, that was difficult for some people. We saw a lot of people changing jobs, moving institutions, leaving the industry itself. And, and that left us with not enough people 
uh, at some of the firms to actually um, do all the business that they wanted to do. So it was uh, constrained from that standpoint. Um, another thing is banks are being more selective, uh, not just on the deals, but on who they're dealing with. Uh, Cross-sell has become more important than ever, and just banks being more selective. And then, of course, toward the end of the year, uh, we had the whole cryptocurrency um, debacle that was raising its uh, uh, ugly side, if you will. So what's coming this year? Uh, you know, we see banks coming back into the market. It is a new year. There are new budgets. Uh, we see many banks looking to grow their balance sheet and expand their, their, um, their portfolio overall. At the same time, we're seeing that runoff happen and some of the sponsors are helping make that happen. Uh, but I, I'll say, I think the banks have a more focused strategy as, as I may have alluded to earlier. Um, in some cases, uh, the balance sheet use, it's, it's got to come with some sort of deposit, some sort of ancillary business that is non-balance sheet driven. I think that that's a, a real key. Another key is the solid use uh, is needed. You know, poorly used facilities, they're just a hard sell at this point in time. And I think they're going to become an even more difficult sell in the future as we see pressure um, on the banks, on the balance sheets, et cetera. Uh, so we may see sponsors actually reduce existing facilities or face increased fees at, at the time they're renewed um, in the future here. We anticipate that with the rise in interest rates, sponsors may want to you know, consider rationalizing the lines of credit um, themselves. Uh, this means doing more with less. And by that, I mean that, again, with this run up in interest rates, you know, the fund managers will look to keep uh, unused expense low. So that may mean contract contracting the lines a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just this era of cheap money has gone. And now you have to be a little more circumspect with how you're using your credit facilities. Um, and, and as the as the pref rate and the interest rate that they're paying come closer together, um, there's going to be much more attention to how large these facilities are overall. That's going to be um, uh, a critical point, quite frankly. Um, managers may look to call capital more frequently, again, as the gap between the pref rate and the cost of borrowing narrows. Um, that will drive down the actual size of the facilities that are are needed in any given point in time. Um, obviously, some some of the managers will still need very large facilities because they need to accommodate some of the large projects that they're working on. And as you know uh, from your own research, some of these uh, projects and in, in, uh, uh, companies that are being purchased, traded in the marketplace are getting very large at this point in time. I still imagine that there's going to be great demand for the lines, but again, it's it's increasingly difficult for banks to simply sit on unused capacity. So that's a, a, it's just a theme that runs um, through all of this. I've also seen a real uptick recently in SMAs. I expect that will continue. It's not for everybody, but I think it will be pervasive in 2023. The last thing I guess I talked about is the NAV facilities. You know, that is just such a hot topic and it will come up certainly in Miami um, as a topic, as well as a few sort of other matters that are going to come up that seem to be more relevant than ever. Uh, in terms of the NAV facilities, we see the FIs and certainly the non-bank FIs clamoring into the space to provide capital there. Uh, it's great because normally in those facilities, we see great use, we see a premium. So it's it's uh, a great use of our, our own capital. Those are just a few of the things I guess I'd see in coming in 2023. And as I say, a bit of a roundup in uh, from 2022. Thanks, Terry. You make some great points there. Um, more with less, still great demand, 
the continued rise of NAV facilities. Uh, we look forward to seeing how those predictions and thoughts play out across the next 12 months. Um, and you've touched upon a good few topics there, all of which as well, uh, that you can find more information uh, within the Global Legal Insights, the fund finance uh, as well. Um, Terry, alongside your day job at MUFG, you are also uh, on the board at the Fund Finance uh, Association and have been for numerous years. Uh, your role in developing the output from the FFA has been influential um, and not to be undone in any way. Um, I guess now as well is a nice point in, in time as well for you just to explain quickly to the viewers a little bit about what the FFA have in store and what the game plan is for the association in 2023. Sure. Well, thanks for the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about that, James. We've got a lot planned um, for the coming year. And, and as you know, last year we, we were back in full force. We had several events. We had over 1,700 participants at the event last the events last year and in fact we had over 500 firms participating in those events this year we've got the full slate starting with miami 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 is going to be bigger than ever this year with over 1300 expected to be in attendance at any given time you know miami miami is the showpiece uh, it's a hugely popular ticket, and we're doing our best to expand the capacity each year. Uh, some of the speakers, uh, Barry Sternlich will be there uh, from Starwood Capital. He's going to talk about a wide range of topics through a fireside chat, and we expect it will be quite entertaining. Uh, in June, we'll be in London. Uh, in June, I guess the beginning of June, we've got the... Uh, uh, event or the summit at the Belfry, which I believe is just a little bit outside London, uh, the home of the 2023 British Masters this year, as well as numerous uh, past Ryder Cup events. Um, this event is only going to be hosting about 250 people from our current sponsors, so it's going to be a bit limited, uh, more small. The plan is to have morning panel sessions, and then in the afternoon, we'll have some group activities, uh, followed by uh, reception, dinner, cocktails, that sort of thing. We're really looking forward to this change in, in venue, and I, I think it'll be fun. Later on in June, we're following that up with uh, another event, and that event's going to be at the QE2. Uh, we expect it'll be more um, similar to the format that we've had previously at the Landmark Hotel, is just that the QE2, we think we can accommodate more people. And uh, if you've attended the event in, in London at the Landmark, it's been a great venue, but we are limited to about 700 people. And the, the demand has just risen exponentially. So we'd encourage people to get sort of tickets as soon as possible. Uh, lastly, in London, it seems like there's a lot going on in London this year, but in September, uh, we're going to hold sort of industry cocktails one evening. And again, we'd encourage people to come out to that. We're trying to make accommodation with uh, the Connaught, uh, and, and um, uh, it, it should be a great event there. Uh, I guess the last uh, symposium conference that we'll be holding will be in October, and that event will be returning once again to Hong Kong. As I'm sure you're aware, Last year, we had it in um, Singapore. It was a great success, but uh, this year, we're going to go back to uh, Hong Kong. Fantastic. A jam-packed <laughs> schedule um, for the FFA then, and uh, I would echo uh, your comments, uh, Terry, in terms of uh, make sure you've got your ticket to whichever event you can attend, because likely they will sell out. Um, Terry, thanks ever so much for joining. We appreciate your market run through. We appreciate you talking a little bit about the Fund Finance Association and, of course, the Pink Book itself. Um, as I say, we appreciate everybody's support within the industry putting this together. We look forward to being out in Miami, uh, seeing you, Terry, at the front of the queue for a couple of copies of the publication 
um, and everybody else behind. Um, so we look forward to that. We look forward to seeing uh, everyone in 2023 and of course the continued growth and success of the fund finance industry. So thanks again. You bet. Thank you, James.